Warning, this video contains excessive parts forming. Viewer discretion advised. Hello and welcome to review number 3, another one of my favourite characters, Ultra Magnus. The original Ultra Magnus was a white Optimus Prime in a suit of armour. He first graced our screens in 1986 in The Transformers The Movie, brilliant film. Ultra Magnus technically comes with 12 accessories, but we're not going to count the armour for simplicity's sake, so he only has 5. Two shoulder cannons, two small blasters, and one big blaster. Shoulder cannons go on his shoulders, small blasters attached to his legs, but this is more for his repaint, Optimus. Our worlds are in danger! Prime, so we're just going to leave them off. And he just holds the big blaster. Out of the box, Magnus looks very imposing. There is no doubt that just his silhouette is enough to scare the Decepticons. Wait. Why do I hear boss music? <laughs> Standing him next to some other figures, we can really see how big Magnus is. Standing at 21cm tall, or just over two cliff jumpers, fully armoured Magnus is certainly a large lad. Looking at the head sculpt, we can see that it's moulded in plastic, with the face and antenna painted, and the eyes are moulded and painted as well. Other details include paint on the legs, all the red and silver on the chest is painted, and a bit of battle damage on the upper legs and inside the arms. He does suffer from hollow sections on his weapons, shoulders and legs, but given what this guy is achieving, I find it acceptable. Another issue is the ankles, they're always at an angle. They did this so that the wheels wouldn't touch the ground, but there had to be a better way of doing this. And finally, there's no Autobot insignia in this mode. They did this because the shoulders in this mode end up on their side in vehicle mode. I don't like it. I don't agree with it. But I accept it. Port-wise, Magnus has 18 weapon ports. So if you want to give him all the weapons, you can. Arms move outwards with a 360 degree rotation at the shoulder, arm and wrist with a 90 degree elbow joint. Head can look up, down and all around. Waist swivel. Legs can move forwards but barely any back. They can move out to the side with thigh rotation and just under 90 degree knees and just under 90 degree ankles. Despite the limited leg movement due to the bulky armour, he can still strike some nice poses. For the first time since the G1 original, we have an Ultra Magnus that is a white Optimus underneath the classic red, white and blue armour. Wait. <laughs> on to the detail. In this mode, Magnus has a nice metallic blue on the crotch plate as well as the headlights being painted. He has an insignia now but I replaced it with a Wrecker one, link in the description if you want to set. The head is sculpted in white plastic painted blue with silver around the red eyes which he didn't need to do because his eyes aren't the same colour as his head. <coughs> Port wise, without his armour he does lose some, now only having 11, and in terms of height he's now 16cm or 1 Optimus Prime or 1.5 cliff jumpers. As a little bonus, if you have a particular corpse in your collection, you can give its gun to Magnus for a nice parallel with his big gun. It's all exactly the same, but the head is a new joint so it can look up, down and all around. Legs can move all the way back, but this extra articulation comes at a cost. Very limited ankle pivot. But you still can get some decent poses out of this guy. Now we could stop here as the truck cab can be separate from the trailer, but it clearly isn't intended to be with the hands just poking out at the back, so we're going to keep going. Fully transformed, it's plain to see that inspiration was taken from the 2001 Robots in Disguise version of Ultra Magnus. From the almost circuit board like trailer to the angular cab. This mode is great if you don't look too hard, because if you do, things start to fall apart. 
with the hole under the cab, the hands and head visible, toes hanging off the back, and windows on the roof. Some sacrifices had to be made to get this figure do what it does. Let's look at him next to some other figures. And oh, I absolutely love the fact that he's the same length as Prime with his trailer. It's almost as if they planned these things out years in advance. And the painted transparent plastic has got to be my favourite way of doing windows. I wish they would do it more often. Gives the illusion of depth without having to show us a bunch of robot kibble. Wheel spin, cannons rotate. Overall, I love this figure. It's not perfect, but it is amazing. With everything it's doing, it most certainly deserves a place in your collection. 4 out of 5 Energon cubes. Yes, I changed my rating system. Fight me. Here we have Smashdown, an Autobot Battlemaster introduced in the Siege toy line and re-released in the Earthrise one. One blast effect and one stick. The blast effect can be used with any 3mm peg and the stick can be used as a tail or as a weapon for him. This little guy is 5cm tall or half a cliff jumper. The red and grey is moulded but the blue and silver is painted. Arms can move out and rotate and same with the legs. Ab crunch. Head rotate. Oh no. He is now a hammer. Get it? Because hammers smash down. Anyway, in this mode, he is not ashamed of his visible head syndrome incorporating it into the design, although the handle leaves a little bit to be desired as it is literally shorter than the hammer itself, but fear not. If you have a sound wave, then you can use its gun as a handle for smashdown. Failing that, you can just plug it into Impactor's hand, or any figure that has a port as a hand. Overall, this figure is alright. It's not the best, but it's not the worst. 3 out of 5 energon cubes.